Right, well, I'd uh, just like to thank you all for coming here today on this, the happiest day of my life. Um, and, <laughs> and, um, I won't stay long, because I know everyone wants to crack on with the dancing, but uh, just before we do, I thought I'd tell you about uh, the second happiest day. <laughs> um, the day that Victoria agreed to marry me. Now, I thought it was going to be a day for us both on this lovely Greek island. And, Get uh, off! <laughs> and um, we went to this lovely little restaurant overlooking the sea, and um, I ordered a seafood platter. Now, unbeknown to Victoria, I took the waiter aside and gave him the engagement ring and asked him to put it on the, the claw of the lobster. Come on! <laughs> <laughs> now, when the moment arrived, I brought the platter over to the table, put it down in the middle, lifted up the lid, and there... John asked me to marry him, and I said yes! <laughs> in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is, is that it? <sighs> yes. Great! <laughs> is it my turn now? Don't, Don't touch me. <laughs> Well, <sighs> I should first of all like to start by apologising for my husband's fucking dull story. <laughs> he gets a bit carried away sometimes. John proposed to me seven times. Seven! A lesser man would probably have given up by around the fourth, but not my John. Not my little Johnny. He just kept banging away, <laughs> wearing me down until finally, to save him any more humiliation, I said yes. <laughs> there comes a time in every woman's life when she says, oh, all right, for God's sake, I'll marry you. Peace and quiet. <laughs> when John first got up to speak, I wasn't sure which one of the seven proposal stories he was going to tell, and I thought, Christ, I hope he doesn't go through them all, because although the ring on the end of the lobster claw is probably the best, it's still shit. <laughs> They say, darling, seven times lucky. Do, do they say that? <laughs> I know what you're thinking. <gasps> She's had a few too many. <laughs> well, I'm here to tell you I've had a few. A few too many. I don't know. I shall let you be the judge of that because I know how much you all enjoy judging. <laughs> to date, I have had 39 all men, 39 sexual liaisons in 15 active years. I just wish I could remember what number John was. <laughs> Isn't it funny? When you start to think of how many different men you slept with. Because it makes you wonder, do I have a type? Well, I realise I don't have a type. Unless you can count they all wore shoes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously. They all did have one big thing in common. And it's not what you're thinking, because I'm including John in this. <laughs> you know, everyone I've ever slept with have always been very, very conscientious about contraception. Even though I'm on the pill, they always insisted that we should also use condom. Now, I thought that's amazing, isn't it? Because subconsciously, I've always been attracted to sort of sensitive, caring, new-age kind of men. You know, I care about my body, 
You care about my body. And it turns out they just didn't want to have ginger kids. <laughs> I don't know if there are any other ginger people out there today, are there? Hmm? Hmm. Do you know any ginger people? <laughs> yes, you do, but they're not here, are they? Because they've got no friends. <laughs> they're all at home, gnawing on a turnip. <laughs> I know there's a few liberal people out there going, no, 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 no. Let the ginger babies be born. Just don't let them grow up and live next door to me. <laughs> we don't want them bringing down our house prices, cluttering up our nice tree-lined streets with their empty bowls of sunblock. <laughs> hey, what do you think? I remember when we met. Me and him. <laughs> he said to me, presumably it was some sort of a compliment, he said, I really like your colouring. I think it's very Elizabethan. Oh, Elizabethan? <laughs> What's that? Oh, yes. Bad teeth and syphilis. <laughs> Still, a shag's a shag, I thought. <laughs> You've got to take it where you can get it when you look like Mick Hartnell. <laughs> it's, you know, it's funny actually when I, when I sit here and I, I listen to John say how happy he is that we're married and how much he loves me because like most of us in this room, I've got a sneaking suspicion that John is gay. <laughs> Something that both he and his family are very, very quick to deny. <laughs> I must say how wonderful it is to see so many of my husband's family here today. No, it's, I'm very touched. My father-in-law, James. Hello, sir who I know is very, very proud that his baby boy has married such a free-loading ginger jippo. <laughs> I believe we your words, James. My mother-in-law, Janice. One, two, one, two, my mother-in-law's so fat. <laughs> fat <as> she is. <laughs> and by contrast, my sister-in-law, Susan. It was a very thin woman. She's so thin. In fact, she's so thin, we weren't actually sure whether or not she was here today. <laughs> but I know that she's out there because I can smell the sick. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't talk about the bulimics. It's a disease. <laughs> I should also like to thank our best man, Jason, who flew in all the way from Sydney to be here today and in true Antipodean style said to me just before the ceremony, how are you, love? You look great and white. Have I got any chance of shagging you? <laughs> and I said, well, you didn't have, but you do now, you smooth-talking bastard. <laughs> I should like to thank you all for coming and finally propose a toast to me and all who sail in me. <laughs>